We start this noon with a look across our state. This hour top left corner camera is in the mountains. I 70 in the Eisenhower Johnson Tunnel area. Top right, we're looking at Denver there. Bottom left, we're taking a look at Boulder this hour. Many of you woke up in the metro to rain and then snow and a very different story in the mountains. They got a big hit overnight. Thank you for joining us this noon. I'm Erica Lopez with meteorologist Corey Rappenhagen. Corey, it's been gloomy so far today, but it kind of felt like the sun was peeking out at some of those cameras. Yep, it's trying right now, Erica. <laughs> I can see it up here. I can see some blue skies and it's going to really going to shape up to be a really nice day across the Denver metro area in the front range, getting those temperatures up into the upper 60s today and the winds are starting to get those wind gusts are becoming a little less frequent. Now take another shot here of the camera looking across the city of Denver towards the west. You can see quite a bit more blue skies towards the west and that's the direction that the sun is headed. So we're going to get those temperatures up there already 61 degrees at Denver International Airport. I think we probably will make it into the upper 60s if the sun breaks through there. Look at these snow reports from overnight 18 inches of Copper Mountain Loveland Pass 16.8 inches a foot of snow at Vail Resort. So the snow was certainly impressive, but that's starting to wind down as you look at the uh, HD Doppler radar right now. Snow showers starting to decrease. Those will be gone by about three o'clock, four o'clock this afternoon and the heavy rain that made its way through the metro, slowly making it across the other side of the state. That will be exiting. Look at that heavy rain exiting the state here over the next few hours. Here is in the Denver metro area. We'll see the sun. We'll see a few clouds in there, but wind will certainly be a little bit of an issue. About one to two gusts per hour going through about the four o'clock hour. And here you see the forecast highs for the state of Colorado for today. I'll be talking about uh, a few more cold fronts heading our way uh, later on in the week. I'll talk about those in just a minute, Erica. All right, Corey, thank you so much. The return to nature funeral home is being demolished today by the EPA. First, though, this morning, families gathered to remember their loved ones. This devastating event shook our community to its core. But beginning today, we will bear each other up. Last year, investigators found more than 190 improperly stored bodies in that funeral home. Former owners John and Carrie Halford are now facing state and federal charges. The EPA tells us demolition will start this afternoon. Crews are taking the building apart in sections and sending it all to a landfill. Today, the Aurora dentist accused of poisoning and killing his wife is due in court. This comes days, days after James Craig was hit with a new felony charge. Prosecutors say he tried to convince someone to tamper with evidence for months while he was in county jail. Now he's accused of trying to persuade two people to help cover up the crime. Last year, prosecutors filed the same felony charge after they say Craig asked a family member to help him. For this new charge, we do not know who the second person Craig is accused of reaching out to. His wife, Angela Craig, died in March of 2023 from lethal amounts of cyanide. Police say James Craig bought poison online weeks earlier and researched how to poison someone. Investigators believe he poisoned his wife through her protein shake. We expect to learn more information about this new charge in court. Craig's trial is set for this summer. Happening today, a man accused in a murder on the streets of Fort Collins is set to face a judge. Dwayne Brown was killed in July of last year at a gas station. He was from South Dakota just visiting Colorado. Police arrested Saman Zare today. Same, uh, and, and today, a judge is scheduled to officially charge him in this case. His arraignment is set to start at 2 o'clock this afternoon in Larimer County. Right now, Commerce City police are investigating a stabbing. They tell us it might have started as a case of road rage. It happened just before 10 last night on Oakland Drive near River Oaks Lane in Henderson. Police say one man went to the hospital, though we do not know how they're doing at this time. The suspect left the scene. Police are still looking for them. If you have any information, you are asked to call Commerce City Police. A fourth body has been recovered from the Baltimore Key Bridge collapse. Another construction worker's body was found on Sunday. Monday, he was identified by the medical examiner. His name is not being released yet per his family's request. A massive cargo ship lost power, veered off course, and hit the Francis Scott Key Bridge on March 26th. Crews issued a May Day call before that crash. 
Now, according to lawyers representing survivors, a survivor claims that Mayday Call never reached the construction workers who were on a break in their cars. The search continues for the bodies of the final two construction workers who died. Happening today, convicted murderer Scott Peterson will be back in court asking for a new trial. Peterson maintains he was wrongfully convicted of murdering his wife Lacey, an unborn child 20 years ago. Now the Los Angeles Innocence Project has taken up the case. Peterson, now 51, was last seen at a hearing in March. His new attorney argued for the release of evidence she says should have been made available at the time of the trial. Peterson is serving a life sentence without parole for those 2002 murders. Police say Peterson dumped their bodies from his fishing boat into the San Francisco Bay on Christmas Eve, where months later their bodies washed up. The L.A. Innocence Project says there is overlooked evidence suggesting they may have been killed by burglars who broke into the home across the street from the Petersons.